Hydra's been busy. Whatever the hell they're doing down here. It smells wicked. Fire Dragoon. Look how fragile you are! Fairly certain we've found out how Hydra is getting the artifacts out of the Sanctum. I'm also fairly certain that I hate this guy. Let's see if we can't shut him up. Come closer, little vampire. Feed our eternal hunger with your eternal blood. We shall feast upon your brain forever. You are lucky to still be breathing. Still in my prime. We will crack your tiny bones. Play with our food. They're hoping to wear me down. More of them are joining the fight. That door of his may be our best bet at getting through to the Sanctum, and finally taking the fight to Lilith. Smells like fresh meat. Surface meat. So much better than sewer meat. Sweet, sweet, surface meat! Yeah. We just had a nice day. Shall be of great help. Wait to run now. He's almost. 
almost graceful the way you swing through the air like that. Easier meal than us, monster. Yes, but I'm the new good crunchy chef. It's spoiled. Mother's blood makes them stronger, but sours the flavor. Too much gamma for our liking. Well, that put me off my lunch. Sidekick. enough to say it. Can we take him down already? Try this on for size! I think you got it. Is that 
truly your best? Venom's breath was bad. It is. Oh, you know I'm kidding, don't you, Charlie? Yeah. How long was I out? Days. What oh. happened? Before or after you exploded. The collar. Still intact. Though, I'll admit, when Agatha and I first made it for you, we didn't anticipate the need to withstand alien energy. It felt like more than that. As if... Thankfully, the Venom creature didn't seem to like it either. Ran off through that gate of his. Which is why Blade was able to get you home. Next time, I will send that thing straight into the Abyss. Next time, there will be no next time. I know I've been pushing things hard. Pushing you. <laughs> That's what you do. Maybe not on this one. At least until we find a way to counteract the volatile effect of these compounding alien and mystic energies. Which reminds me, Strange and Stark have been chomping at the bit to come see you. Which, of course, I would not allow. Hope you were not too rough on them. Me? Of course not. Though I can't speak for Charlie. Still, wouldn't hurt to show your face around here when you're ready. People are starting to worry.
Tell me about it. And you are certain it will hold? We wouldn't be standing here if I wasn't. You two focus on the creature. I will worry about the collar. Haven't really seen Blade since he got back from the sewer. Carrying Hunter home on his back. He's still outside. Being extra broody. Maybe you should talk with him. Um... Good idea. I'll go with you if you like. Um... All I'm saying is the tower's lost. We're no closer to breaking through Slimerama's Sanctum Shield, and our exalted Chosen One just... woke up. And is listening to our every word. Uh, it's great to see you on your feet again, boss. is that it's never a good thing when the prophesied savior of yore blows up. Glad to see you back on your feet again. Strange and I tried to stop by for a little house call while you were out, but turns out your dog is part flamethrower. She is very protective. That's one word for it. Listen, I know you're probably hearing all sorts of comments after your last tangle with Venom. For what it's worth, we both just wanted to say that we don't think you should get within 50 light years of that thing until we sort out what the hell's going on between you two. How does the old saying go? Slash me once, shame on you. Slash me twice. I couldn't have said it better. It's like I'm talking to a living meme. I would hope not. The last meme was killed during the Great Culling. Their mimic abilities made them one of the deadliest threats of the old world. Right. Let's get back to fighting the giant alien slime monster. Look, Strange and I have been studying pieces of that symbiote ever since this nightmare began. Problem is, the further they get from the source, the more their molecular structure changes, which basically renders them useless to us. In zombie movie terms, I need a sample from Patient Zero. The old slime ball himself. Venom. Or Eddie, if you talk to Peter. Either way, that's our guy. We get a sample from him, somehow maintain its molecular integrity long enough for Strange and I to poke around at it, and, well, we're in business. Let me guess, you have a new gadget in mind for the task. Gadget? No, not a gadget. Plans for a groundbreaking device to solve this insurmountable problem and keep you from exploding next time you fight the indestructible monster? You betcha. I like where this is going. Good, calling it my symbiote sampler for now. Hey, I ran out of acronyms, okay? Stage one in stopping our symbiote nightmare once and for all. Meet me over by ye old anvil over there and we can get started. Oh, you're not afraid of needles, right? Needles? Forget I asked. I'm sure I'm not the first person to inquire on this fine morning, but seeing as how you did explode in what I might describe as a most spectacular fashion, any side effects I should know about? Headache? Blurred vision? The urge to murder us all? Do not waste your energy worrying about me, Doctor. I am fine. Oh, but it's my job to worry, quite literally. Worrying is written into my contract with the Avengers, and I don't want to be in breach of that. Tony is a stickler for the fine print. But, in all seriousness, I hope you feel comfortable enough to disclose any medical conditions you may be experiencing now. We can't in good conscience send you back into battle against Hydra if you're not in tip-top condition. Caller, I am afraid the explosion cracked it. Cracked? How big is this crack? Minor. Almost undetectable. Hmm, a small fissure should not be a problem. Your collar is made of tough stuff. Almost as tough as you. But if you see it expanding even a millimeter, you must, and I mean must, come to me immediately. Absolutely. You have my word, Doctor. 
Is there anything else I can help you with? Any burning philosophical questions about the universe you need answering? Are you worried about what is happening to the Sanctum? I try to keep those thoughts roped away from my own sanity. I am deathly afraid of what Lilith is doing in there. I don't think she hijacked my home just so she could rifle through my sock drawers. How do you do it? Do what? Balance both light and dark magic without becoming overwhelmed with one or the other. Yes, I am rather well-rounded in my magical gifts, aren't I? I suppose I see magic as a tool. I use magic, but it doesn't use me. Just remember, you don't need to go pure dark or pure light unless you want to. There is room for everyone's own unique path. Do you really think we will be able to halt the prophecy? Halt? No, unfortunately not. Prophecies are stubborn things. So you do not believe I can change mine? Anything we do would be like dropping a rock in a stream. We might stop it or divert it for a bit, but the relief would only be temporary. This prophecy will come true, one way or another. I should take my leave. There is much to do. Yes, yes there is. Just don't push yourself too hard. You are, after all, still part human. An undeniable essence of power. What are we building today? So, do you have much experience with smithing? Perhaps you should put your suit on for this. Where do you think I got the suit, Doc? I assume through some sort of elaborate computer-aided precision manufacturing process. Well, that's how it is now, sure, but the very first one I hammered out with my own two hands. Oh, that seems improbable. You're a wizard! Remind me not to ask you about anything ever. Not my best work, but it'll do. Here's the plan. I'll hit this thing with the big hammer, and you transform it into something useful. That's all I can expect of your contribution, then? No materials analysis, no tactical projections, nothing? Nope. I'm feeling hands-on today. Just gonna hammer stuff and see how it goes. You do your thing, though. Ugh, this is why I despise group projects. Your craftsmanship must be improving, Tony. All right, now we're talking. Hydra turning tail already. Not 
bad, right? I wasn't too worried about you, Hunter. But Eddie? Beneath that snarling, demonically possessed alien symbiote skin, Brock's just a big old softy. Glad you're okay, though, Hunter. Really, I am. I have something for you. I know. The Red Skull's bathing cap. Sorry. Never mind. No prop. You're one tough cookie, Hunter. Biscotti level tough. Biscotti? Teeth breaking Tony kind of cookie. If only I was more teeth breaking with venom. Yeah, not your best moment, but it wasn't a total bust. We learned that it takes more than an energy blast straight from hell to wipe you out. True. And that blade? He's an asset. I owe him my life. Yeah, he gets five stars from me. And ass-kicking abilities aside, he's pretty on point with his movie references. Outside the mission stuff, I gotta say, I had my doubts about Blade. The brooding vibe, the sunglasses indoors, his lack of preference between a Chicago style versus New York, which is just plain wrong. But the more I see him in action, the more I think he might be an okay dude. You definitely left a mark on him as well. He is quite impressed with your capabilities. Well, let him know. The feeling is 100% mutual. Happy to have him on the team. Anyway, I wanted to ask how you were and it turned into a full-blown cooler talk. Better get back to work before the boss notices. Catch you later. See you soon. Hunter, good to see you on your feet again. Caretaker, are you all right? That's what I wanted to ask you. I know you're on your feet and seem fine after that explosion with Venom. But I know all too well from experience that sometimes the worst injuries are not visible to the naked eye. So, please tell me, Hunter, are you actually as fine as you seem this morning? Or should I be worried? No, caretaker, I am not. My collar, the explosion, it, it cracked it. Cracked? Yes. I feared this would happen. Venom was filled with your mother's power. It would be naive to think it couldn't fracture even our best defenses against her. Ugh. At least cracked doesn't mean broken. Not yet, at least. You will have to work doubly hard to rein in your darkness. Your actions and words mean more than ever now. Make sure you use them with integrity. I understand. Yeah, well... I guess I should stop fussing over you and go see what horrors Hydra has in store for us today. As you were, Hunter. Glad to see you're not dead. Surviving explosions is Super Heroism 101. I hear I owe you my thanks. You know, when you were resurrected, I was sure you wouldn't be able to overcome the darkness inside you. What do you think now? I'm beginning to think I was right. You are your mother's kid, all right. No escaping that. I know who my mother is, and I know what that means for me, but I assure you, I am working hard to resist her. Just keep being as honest with yourself as you're being with me right now, Hunter. 
and you might just have a chance. Might. Just... what do you think you saw? You're telling me you don't remember what happened after that blast? Because that was some messed up shit. Tell me. You were crying out for your mother. Calling out her name like a lost kid at a theme park while all this crazy-ass dark energy were swirling around your body, almost taking it over. I was so sure you were about to fall that I didn't leave your side. Surprised you came too with the light still in your eyes. I feel fortunate to have you looking out for me, Daywalker. You and I, we share the same burden of bad, and that's some heavy shit to carry. I want you to know, you don't have to carry it alone. I would appreciate you not sharing what you witnessed with the rest of the team. I don't plan to. It's not mine to share. I'll leave that to you. Heading to shop class. You in? I am ready. Right on. Good instincts, but you want to tighten up the array. Uh, like this? Close. Here, I can show you. Uh, what's all the, uh, new equipment? Ah, the supplies? No need to thank me. Donated to the cause, courtesy of five Stark subsidiaries. Wow, that's... it's really something. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess, but just take what you need. I'll clear out the rest, I promise. Awesome. That's great. Huh. What is wrong? It's nothing. Did you know Tony planned to do this? No. Did you? Nope. Maybe he can tell us what's going on. How's it going, boss? Ready to get your hands greasy? Tony, why did you bring all this equipment? Really? The old stuff has a junkyard horked up in an 80s machine shop vibe. Why, were we supposed to vote on it? The supplies are helpful, but we could have used a warning. Yeah, I should have sent a message to your Sparks. My bad. I'll call a mulligan on this one. What is a mulligan? It's a... I'm gonna say it's a type of, uh, carburetor. Good to know. So, about this situation, I get it. We're bumping elbows. But you kids are doing good work here. Whatever you want to do, I'll support it. I spoke with Tony about the equipment. He says he wanted to support shop class. That's all? He did not lie, but I am uncertain he told the whole truth. Hmm. Uh, good to know. Look, you came here to make something. Don't keep Parker waiting. I guess I'll keep an eye on Tony. Make sure he doesn't do any crazy rich people stuff. Like what? We don't want to find a champagne waterfall in the break room, you know? Actually, that would be tight. Glad you cleared that up with Tony. Now we can get to work. Now that we know Wanda's a threat, you'll need an edge if you face her again. What kind of edge? Nothing that involves her coming to harm. We're looking at ways to protect you from her abilities. How is that possible? Our first prototype keeps you connected to the real world in case Wanda alters it around you. Like an anchor, tethering me to reality? Exactly. If Wanda alters your reality, our second prototype alters it back. Robbie got the idea from his spirit of vengeance. I think the prototype is powered by Hellfire, so best not to jostle it. Like a button I press to reset her alterations. Or a broadcast interfering with her own transmission. Perfect. You got it. All right, components. Let's see what you have for me. I do not have everything you need. Oh, don't worry. We'll try again next time. 
I'm ready to put this together. How about you? I am ready. Well, that went not poorly. And that's a decent prototype. Just needs refinement before you bring it to market. You plan to sell it? It's only an expression. Although, nope, stopping right there. Let me know when you're ready to take off. I am ready to go. That is good work. Well done. Here to gloat, Mother? Quite the opposite. I was concerned. I could not sense you after... Your pet monster nearly destroyed me. An unintended and unforeseen consequence of your continued assault against me. The mystical energies within our blood do not always mix well with off-worlders. But neither do the wards of your pretentious sorcerer. The Venom creature is a calculated but necessary risk. Alien monstrosities, Wanda's unchecked powers coupled with Banner's unhinged mind. Whatever you are planning, Mother, I fear it may be beyond even your control. Your concern touches me, but I would risk the heavens themselves if it meant saving you. I do not need saving. Oh, but you do. And that crack in your collar is the first step. Every revolution of self starts with the tiniest of rifts. An ever so slight splinter in the glass. A hanging thread begging to be pulled until it unravels all. You should be celebrating. That crack is the beginning of your emancipation from my sister's control. She keeps you collared because she fears you. They all do. Sarah wants to hold you back from realizing your full potential, the way she tried to hold me back centuries ago. I am starting to think this centuries-long conflict is nothing more than a bad case of sibling rivalry. If only it were that simple. It is about you. It always has been about you. Besides, you are the person she's trying to subjugate. I've already broken free. Once you're unshackled, you will finally be free to be yourself. And who is that? Answer me!